The leaders in power have a problem with what he's doing because they like things the way they are. But there's still this underlying current of racism and discrimination. Man, everybody in the church looks just like us. Nobody's saying anything about it. Nobody is addressing the fact that the most segregated hour in America is 11 a.m. on a Sunday. So my point here is that the church was actually growing and there was no diversity. They continue, Jews continue to minister to Jews, Koreans to Koreans, blacks to blacks. And then I read something in chapter 11. Chapter 11 says that everybody was preaching only to the Jews. But in this one place, in Antioch, they actually started preaching to other people. It was Antioch. is where the Bible says, and the believers there were first called Christian. Chapter 11 forces me to embrace. Chapter 11 forces me to lay down my bigotry. Chapter 11 forces me to lay down and quit discrimination. Chapter 11 forces me to look at man and woman as equals. Chapter 11 forces me to look at all people as people created in the image of God. It's not until you get to Antioch that people say, I don't care about my own culture and my own language. The kingdom of God is bigger than my race. The kingdom of God is bigger than my ethnicity. The kingdom of God is bigger than my culture. My point is this. It's not until believers began seeing our differences not as a barrier but as a blessing. Do you understand that God created diversity? The true beauty of worship is when you can bring together the textures and the fabrics and the colors and the hues of God's creation and bring them into the same place and elevate the sun. The beauty of worship is not in your skill. It's in your love. 